Dear fellow coders, welcome to One Little Coder. In this very short Python tutorial, I would like to show you how to create a Twitter themed word cloud using your tweets. So basically what we are going to do in this video is extract your tweets using TweetPy and then also make a very beautiful stylish word cloud using style cloud. So we are going to use two Python libraries to do this task. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video and then let's get started. The first step is I've got a Google Collab Notebook. So I have a Google Collab Notebook. You can do this on your own machine or Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab, wherever you would like to do. The first step is you need to install the required libraries. So I'm installing TweeP, so TweeP, TweePy, however you would like to call it. And then the next thing is Style Cloud. So to quickly show you style cloud is this library from Minimaxer. So this is a library that I've been recently using for quite a while to create beautiful stylish world clouds. And this is amazing because by default it handles stop words. You don't have to manually add in stop words to handle stop words. And also the greatest thing about this, you can mask, you can create theme um, on basis of uh, font awesome icons. So you've got font awesome icons that is used as a mask, like for example, if you want uh, if you want a word cloud that is in the shape of twitter tweet twitter logo then you you have a font awesome icon so for whatever thing you have a font awesome icon for example this is this is twitter's font awesome icon whatever thing you have font awesome icon for example let's say you want one in google's google's theme okay so now you have a font awesome icon for google and all you have to do is get the name get the get the icon from google like get the uh, get the code from this go back to your code and add it so this, this is extremely useful library for making word clouds if you are interested in that. TweetPy doesn't need an introduction. This is a library that is used to connect with Twitter API using Python. So you don't have to actually write get request. Rather you would write Python code that would connect to Twitter API and collect tweets for you. So this is TweetPy and StyleCloud and I'm installing them quite silently. So that's what Q is. So after I install it, then I need four keys. So this is something that you would get when you go to developer.twitter.com. So you have to go to developer.twitter.com. And once you go there, you would have this interface where you have to go to developer portal and then there you would get the, the keys, whatever you want. So I'm not going to show you how to do that here at this point, at least um, this is quite easy. It's not a very difficult thing. All you have to do is go to developer.twitter.com, sign up or log in here and then get your access keys. And if you have never got a developer account, this might take a couple of days, sometimes first time for them to approve. After that, it's quite simple. So if, if you are planning to, you know, use this for a presentation or something else, make sure at least two days before you get this, this um, access codes before in hand. So this is if you want to use TweetPy, that's what we are going to use in this code. But if you don't want to use Twitter API, which is the most advisable way of extracting tweets, there is a library called Twint. So Twint is a Python library that helps you extract in this particular case, scrape tweets without having access to API. So if you don't want to use API or if you do not have ways to use API or if you do not have developer account, then you can use Twint. I'm not covering Twint in this particular video, but if you are interested, let me know in the comments. But if you do not have API access, then you know, there is a different Python library that's got you covered. So you can use Twint. I'm not sure if it's Python. Yeah, it's Python. So you have Twint. But in this video, we're going to look at TweetPy. So we have TweetPy, StyleCloud, both of them are installed. And then we have got the developer access, all the keys, consumer key, or sometimes it's called API key, consumer secret, or it's called API secret, access token, access token secret. So you've got all the four codes. And when you, when you create your developer um, account and create these tokens, you have to make sure that you copy and paste it. The second time you would not be able to copy it. You have to revoke the entire code and paste it again. So which means if you have got any bot running with these codes, when you revoke it, that, that bot wouldn't work anymore. So this is an extra information, which, which I recently struggled. So the next thing is I'm importing TweetPy because, um, because we need to extract tweets and I'm using import pandas as PD to write the CSV. So after we extract the tweets, we're going to just write the text part of the tweets. So the next part is the TweetPy authentication, TweetPy authentication, TweetPy.auth handler, where you have got consumer key and consumer secret, and then set access tokens, auth.set access tokens, then you have access token, 
This is very standard operating procedure. And finally, you are doing the authentication API is equal to tweepy.api of auth. So at this point, if this successfully happens without any error, so you have successfully managed to authenticate, which means the key that you entered is correct. The developer account that you got with key, everything is correct. So you have successfully managed to establish connection from whatever interface you're coding to the Twitter API through TweePy. So the next thing what we are trying to do is we are trying to extract tweets of a particular account, tweet handle. So the handle that I've selected is Philip. So Philip is quite popular in the NLP machine learning community on Twitter and LinkedIn. So I wanted to quickly see what kind of tweets either Philip has tweeted or retweeted. So that's what that's what I wanted to see. So I've got the username and then I've got a user timeline. So user timeline method is used to extract tweets of somebody else. So if you want to use, uh, if you want to extract tweets of your own tweets, there is a different method for that. But in this case, if you want to use it for somebody else, you can use user underscore timeline and then give their username as a screen name. By default, only 200 tweets are allowed because of the Twitter API. If you want to do more than 200, there are a lot of different ways to do it. One is to use TweetPy cursor or something else is to use um, like a pagination method, like you, you have a while loop running um, and then you go by tweet ID. So you have a lot of different methods. I'm not going into the section because you have a lot of those snippets available on the internet. So if you want more than tweet, 200 tweets, you can always find a way to extract more than 200 tweets using TweetPy as well. P pagination or cursor or two different ways you can easily arrive at that solution. So, but in this video for this particular project, I'm going to show you only 200 because I wanted to keep this video short, probably sweet. So the next thing is include RTs. Make sure that you download also RTs, retweets if you want. The next thing is if you specify, if you do not specify tweet mode is extended, then you would get only the 140 characters. So for you to 140 words, sorry, for you, for you to extract more than 140, then you need, I, I should have said 140 characters for you to extract more than 140, you need to mention tweet mode is equal to extended. So once you do this thing, you're going to have all the tweets or at least I should say 200 tweets by this username stored inside this. So this is basically the response of a get request, right? So this is basically you have sent a get request and got the response back. It's not a pandas data frame it. So if you are a data scientist, machine learning engineer, it's highly likely that, you know, you might want to use a pandas data frame. So the next code snippet is a very simple code snippet that takes the JSON response and then it iterates and simply uses JSON normalize from pandas again to convert into a pandas data frame, right? So at this point, you have taken the response. Oops, sorry, did I just delete them? Yeah, response object, okay, for R and tweets. So it go through everything and then take the JSON and put it inside JSON object and then do JSON normalize. So at this point, like if I have to show you, you have got a pandas data frame. You have got a pandas data frame that has a lot of information. When this tweet was created, what is the tweet ID and what is the full text? Was it truncated or full? What is the image source? Uh, is it replied to somebody? You have like you have like tons of information. Like uh, was it favorited? Was it retweeted? What is this? Like you have you have so many informations. Like what are, what are the users? Who are the users that are mentioned in the tweets? You can also see their names and who tweeted this. Of course, we know from where it was tweeted and um, and what is the user description? Of course, Philip's description. And you have ton, tons of like more information you, you can just scroll and then see but we are not quite interested in any of those things for this particular use case you can definitely check it out if you want something else so what we are interested in is the column called full text so there is a column called full text i should have showed you probably at the start it exists at the start which is called full 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 yeah so i've got full text Okay, and it also says, you know, the, the display text range. So I've got full text and this is what we are quite interested in. So full text, I'm going to convert it to CSV and then store it in my local space. 
which is basically in this case the Google Colab space. Okay, if you are doing it on your local machine, it could be probably your local machine, but in this case, now you might wonder why do I have to do this thing? The reason why do we have to do this is Style Cloud. If you look at Style Cloud, Style Cloud accepts two kinds of inputs. Okay, one if you are using Style Cloud within Python. Okay, so let me show. Oh, where am I in Style Cloud? Yeah. If you if you see Style Cloud, you can either take a text file or you can take a CSV file with a single column. So again, let me repeat it slowly. If you want to make a word cloud using style cloud, it takes either a TXT file, a text file, or it takes a CSV file, which is also basically a text file, but with a single column. So either like complete text or a CSV file with a single column. So I'm going to just create that CSV file with single file, uh, single column. So that's why if you see, I've just taken full text written the CSV index is equal to false and that CSV is called tweets.csv. So at this point, we have successfully managed to do authentication. We have successfully managed to download the tweets and we successfully managed to save the tweets as a CSV single column file. Now the next step is let's import style cloud and after that it's it's child's play. Um, thanks to Minimaxer for making this amazing library. It's literally the most amazing and simpler word cloud version that you could have you know ever found out. So specify the file path from where you want to extract the tweets and then the icon name just like I said at the start you can go to Fontasm like I'll, I'll probably show you and then find the icon that you want in, in our case we are actually trying to make a Twitter logo Twitter themed um, word cloud so the Twitter icon name the palette. So the next thing is palette. Where do you get the palette from? So it basically uses this um, palette from matplotlib, I think. So you have a lot of different palettes available. You can, for example, let's say you you can like I think currently it's, you, it uses color brewer, and within that you can you can find which one you like, and then you can just copy the path, and then you can you can share it there. But you also have different options. Maybe you know like after we generate our first word cloud, we can try a couple of options. So this is palette and the next thing is maybe maybe I should come on this place. Yeah, I think that would be slightly more helpful. Hash cool. Yeah, the next thing is background color. What what do you want the background color to be? Do you want it to be white color or black color? Black color is quite suitable for a dark theme. White color is quite suitable for a lot of presentations and the gradient. How do you want the gradient to be horizontal, vertical? How do you want the gradient to be? Finally, stop words. Do you want it to have stop words like the algorithm to automatically include stop words by default it is true but if you want to add custom stop words then that's where the challenge begins because then the default stop words would not work i'll probably show you why does it happen okay so for now what i'll probably do is i'll just comment this okay and uh, yeah i've just commented this so that you you get to see like what what are we building so at this point we have the tweets we are extracting the tweets and then we are going to make a word cloud so the next thing is the word cloud is generated as a png and then again it gets stored in your current directory if you have a project directory it would get stored in a project directory so it just gets generated in the like i've, I've just kept the default name but you can also specify the file name style cloud.png then i'm using just simple jupyter notebook or ipython um, in, uh, display to just display the image so this is how it looks it's a it's a wonderful image um, and again it's quite quite simple to create but if you see this thing you would immediately notice there are quite a few things that are not very correct rt could not be the most tweeted word right means of course but it is why because we can see that there are a lot of tweets are retweets so when retweet is read using any algo, any library uh, or even Twitter API, it starts with, it has a prefix called RT. Okay. So now do you want this? You don't want this thing. If you do not want this thing, now that's where you need to give your custom stop words. So now when you give your custom stop word, what happens is you don't get to use the existing stop word. So that, what does it mean? It means not just custom stop words that you want, you also want to append this with the existing start smart stop words base. 
let me say that again when you give your custom stop words the stop words that are inbuilt in this library would not work for you so which means there will be lot of other words for example let me show you maybe that's that's easier to show you than talk so let's say i've just i've just added rts as a stop word and philips name okay so now what happens when i write when i create this word cloud you would actually see lot of other words that would should have been stop word the this on to with and is for my you ideally these are stop words right you should have stopped these words so for that what i have done is i have i've done a very dirty trick which is uh, i've gone to a gist where somebody has kindly put all the stop words that are in nltk library so instead of me you know like importing and then uh, printing the nltk stop words i just copied the stop words and appended it here so thanks to that random internet person of course it's not very random probably i should give credit where it is due it is it is it is yeah abhishek and then also it is arvind padmanabhan so it's abhishek and arvind who has helped me with these stop words at this point and that's what i'm using it it basically comes from nltk library you can display it so after you do this thing you have your custom stop words also along with the other stop words that are typically used in nltk library now let's run this and run this and wait for the new style cloud or stylish world cloud to show up amazing right now you have the beautiful stylish world cloud available if you want to change the color you can go simply say instead of white give me black and then rerun it again and then you would have a dark themed colors very well handled word cloud so you can see a dark themed very well handled word cloud if you want to change the color palette let's say like you want to keep it white you want to change the color palette all you have to oops so i i'll probably show you the icon first if you want to change the icon you go here search for the icon fontasm icon copy here come back maybe let's 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 find linkedin i know philip is quite interested in linkedin so let me find linkedin yeah this this one start using this icon copy this here come back here and then paste it here and then try to run this hopefully it works you can see it's it's generated and you can see there is a linkedin icon with the word cloud so you can see all the items and you can again play with black and white and also you can see in the color palette going to the color palette here so basically in a simple you know few lines of python code you have managed to do authorization um, for twipy which is to connect your local python code with twitter api using your twitter access codes tokens secrets that you have extracted extract the tweets convert the tweets into a pandas data frame and after you convert the pa tweets into pandas data frame it's it's just pure bliss and beauty where you use that csv file to create the word cloud that you wanted so let me let me convert this back to twitter because you know that's what we have done right so and um, and yeah so you have a, you have a final file so you can just oops did i just make a mess background color twitter can you even believe it that i have given background color twitter so yeah so ultimately you would have this um, beautiful file which you can just go and download uh, or you can right click this image and save it and i hope this video was helpful to you and um, and yeah um, you can see the tweets uh, this is just again 200 you you can you can use different scripts to extend this to more than 200 tweets but again if you just want to play with this it should be good fine and uh, i hope i introduce some nice scripts python tutorial for you um if you have any comments please let me know in the comment section otherwise if you create any style cloud or word cloud please make sure that you tag me wherever you create i'd love to see what you created and then also appreciate the work so thank you so much for listening to me happy coding